Hello and welcome, welcome to this course, course machinery for, for diagnosis and signal processing. Today's topic is gear for diagnosis. Now this is again a B project of uh, year 2013-14 for diagnosis of gear transmission system using acoustic techniques. A gear system is a power and motion transmission device that is applied most exten extensively in various kinds of industrial equipments. I would say most of the industrial equipments are based, uh, are having a gearbox because uh, whenever we need to reduce the speed and increase the torque, uh, we need a, a gear system, gear transmission system. Uh, so, in every industry the gearbox is extensively used its operational state directly affects the function of the whole equipment. Faults and failures of gears can cause great damage to whole production. Therefore, the diagnosis of gear fault is of significant importance. So, in today's lecture, we are uh, dealing with gear faults. Now, what are the different gear faults? The common defects in the gears can be a bearing of tooth. Here you can see that uh, the tooth is worn out. Then uh, a portion of a tooth is chipped off, then uh, pitting uh, impressions occur on the flank of the gear because of the heavy load, then uh, the tooth gate burr, the tooth is completely missing, uh, the crack is, is developed uh, at the root of the tooth. So, these are some of the common defects uh, in the gears. Now, uh, to detect uh, the gear fault, gear mesh frequency plays very, very important role. Without having a knowledge of gear mesh frequency, you actually cannot detect uh, the fault or I would say you cannot detect the actual location of the fault uh, because uh, in a gearbox, there are, there are number of gear pairs, there are number of gears in the gearbox and every gear uh, has got different number of teeth uh, and uh, they are rotating at different RPMs. So, to detect uh, a gear fault uh, or to detect the exact location of the gear fault, gear mesh frequency knowledge is very, very important because uh, in industry you do not have that much time that uh, to stop the uh, to stop the machine uh, take out the casing of a gearbox find which gear is damaged then a purchase uh, uh, that gear may be may not be available in the stores so you need to purchase it from the market then install it and then restart the machine so that much uh, time is not there in the industry so, it is uh, very, very important to find out uh, the exact location of the gear, faulty gear, which gear is faulty and before opening the gearbox itself, uh, if we are ready with the spare gear, then a lot of production time can be reduced, a uh, lot of uh, uh, material, man hours can be saved. So, the exact location of the fault can only be detected uh, once uh, you have a gear mesh frequency knowledge. So, gear mesh frequency can be calculated, it is a formula, it is a very simple formula, gear mesh frequency is equal to number of teeth in gear into rotational speed of the gear. So, number of teeth into rotational speed of the gear would give uh, the gear mesh frequency. Now, in the frequency domain, uh, if you analyze uh, uh, gear fault, vibration signal or acoustic signal in frequency domain, then you can see a prominent peak uh, at uh, gear mesh frequency and uh, gear mesh frequency is always, always associated with the side bands. So, you will not see a single uh, prominent peak in the frequency domain uh, as far as uh, gear fault signal is concerned it is always associated with the side bands and these side bands are of uh, magnitude 
n1 by 60 and n2 by 60 okay so on either side of the gear mesh frequency on this side and on the other side also you can see the side bands uh, that is n1 by 60 n2 by 60 so the frequencies in gearbox spe spectrum is always associated with gear mesh frequency plus minus uh, the gear speed divided by 60 and pinion speed divided by 60 and with increase in the severity of a gear defect the amplitude of the side band would also increase so this is uh, how you can detect the gear fault in the frequency spectrum so this uh, gear mesh frequency knowledge side band frequency knowledge is always always helpful in detecting the exact location of the uh, faulty gear now for this uh, experimentation purpose uh, we have used uh, this gear box here you can see that one gear pair are of metal gears and another gear pair are of uh, synthetic uh, material now uh, the algorithm that we have used for the experimentation is this one uh, the experimentation would start with a source of vibration so we have seeded uh, the defect in the gears uh, so that uh, we can study it so the source of vibration is the seeded defect then we installed a transducer then we analyze the signal in time domain we check the time domain statistical parameters and if the time domain statistical parameters uh, shows presence of fault uh, in the signal then uh, the next step would be a frequency domain analysis uh, we apply the fast fourier transform and uh, uh, then uh, we can diagnose the exact location of the fault now uh, these faulty frequencies are are compared with the gear mesh frequencies and side band frequencies and this is how uh, we can detect the gear fault in the gear signal now to start the experimentation we have seeded uh, the fault uh, in the gear and then Uh, we have found out uh, the time domain statistical parameters for healthy uh, gears and faulty gears so here you can see that uh, for healthy gears the values of rms kurtosis and tick are showing uh, upward trend so this is the comparison between the healthy signal and defective signal so rms value kurtosis value and tick value all three statistical parameters shows upward trends but there are limitations of time domain analysis we have earlier also we have discussed that uh, the limitation of time domain analysis is that it only indicates the presence of fault it doesn't give the location of the fault so that is why the signal needs to be further analyzed for detecting the exact location of the fault so the location of the fault can be detected Uh, by calculating the gear mesh frequencies so uh, gear mesh frequency can be calculated by uh, number of teeth multiplied by uh, the rpm so these are these are the calculated uh, gear mesh frequencies at various speeds for 1490 speed the frequency for metal gear is 596 that of fiber gear is 941 and like this so this is a power spectrum of faulty fiber gear at 941 rpm so as far uh, as uh, the gear mesh frequency for for uh, synthetic gear or a fiber gear at 941 comes out to be 250.933 <coughs> and here also you can see a prominent peak at uh, that gear mesh frequencies and here you can see some small side bands also similarly uh, the power spectrum of a faulty metal gear 
at 1490 rpm so at 1490 rpm we calculated the gear mesh frequency as 596 and here also a prominent peak uh, appears at 593 hertz and these uh, gear mesh frequency is associated with the sidebands also so presence of side sideband and prominent peak at uh, the gear mesh frequency uh, they are the indication of the presence of gear fault in the signal then uh, we have done the severity analysis that means uh, we keep on increasing the depth of the fault on the gear and we try to find out uh, the various time domain statistical parameters uh, with the increasing level of severity so the, uh, here we have increased the rpm as 430 440 450 460 and at the same time uh, the fault uh, severity is also increased as fault 1 fault 2 fault 3 and fault 4 so 1 2 3 4 they indicate the the increase in the severity of a gear fault and uh, here we have obtained the kurtosis values of uh, all the faults at all the rpm so when we plotted uh, these kurtosis values then uh, we can see that uh, as the speed uh, as the speed uh, increasing uh, then the value of kurtosis is also increasing similarly as the severity of the fault increases the value of kurtosis is also increases so this uh, time domain statistical parameter kurtosis is a good indication of the increase in the severity at, as well as uh, uh, detection detecting a gear gear defect the conclusion from this project is time domain statistical parameter for signal analysis such as rms value peak value kurtosis and crest factor are used for detecting the presence of fault in simple safety uh, critical accessory components the statistical parameter rms is capable to identify the fault condition but kurtosis trend has not shown any effective fault categorization ability in the present gear fault condition okay. so this is how